The Beast Within, 1982. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Terry Cooper and this is Marvelous Videos. The Beast Within, released in 1982 and directed by the French-Australian director Philippe Mora, the maker of greats such as Mad Dog Morgan, has largely gone unnoticed in the classic horror repertoire of the late 1970s and 80s. It's not a movie to watch for inspiration, to reminisce about our childhoods, or even for a relaxing night in. Nonetheless, The Beast Within is firmly entrenched in our psyche. The Beast Within is a horror B-movie. It's a crude adaptation of Edward Levy's 1981 novel which was in the process of being completed at the time of filming and was widely derided by contemporary reviewers. Over time, the movie has developed a modest cult following. Part of the film's lasting impact stems from its promotional campaign when it was launched on home video many years ago. Although the VHS, DVD and Blu-ray cover of The Beast Within has changed over the years, the one we remember most vividly featured a picture of a demonically possessed half-human, grotesque creature in painful traffic by the murky, grainy picture quality and the terrible auditory embellishments. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Now, let's begin, says new wife Caroline. Caroline conceives as a result of the impregnation. This movie was released at the end of the horrific transformation phase of horror films, which was ended by John Carpenter's 1982 movie The Thing. Other movies included in this genre are 1981's An American Werewolf in London and The Howling, which prompted the development of a new Oscar category for this type of visual effects. About 17 years after the incident, their child Michael, played by Paul Clemens, suffers from an unexplained illness and looks to be on the verge of death. Caroline and Eli leave him in the hospital and return to Nairobi, Mississippi, a tiny village near the location of the attack, thinking that the solution to Michael's condition lies in the identification of his biological father. The local magistrate, Judge Kerwin, played by Don Gordon, as well as newspaper editor Edwin Kerwin, played by Logan Ramsay, are skeptical of their inquiry into the horrific murder that occurred on the same evening as Caroline's assault, wherein the victim's remnants were partially devoured and his house was burned down. The creative credits for the film are strange and Deceptive. Author Edward Levy sold the movie rights to The Beast Within, but he suffered from writer's block due to which he missed the publication's deadline for his book. The title was given to scriptwriter Tom Holland, who devised an original tale for this. Amanda Platt, played by Catherine Moffat, discovers him a few houses away. She takes him to the doctor's office since she is concerned about his health. Dr. Shoemaker, played by R.G. Armstrong, contacts Eli and Caroline, but everybody is surprised to learn that Michael's health is improving. He's sleeping peacefully now. I think it best we don't disturb him. Tom Holland wrote an 84-page spec script that went into great detail about the Kerwin family and what transpired with Billy Connors, whose remnants can only be seen in the dungeon in the movie, as well as why Connors turned into a cicada to fully restore himself and assault Bibi Besh's character 17 years before. Michael pays Amanda a visit. They go out for a stroll in the forest and confess their feelings for one another. However, while they embrace, Amanda's dog unearths a partially devoured human hand. Sheriff Poole, played by L.Q. Jones, is contacted, and he, Judge Kerwin, Irwin and Eli begin excavating the area in search of more remains. Played by John Dennis Johnston, Amanda's father Horace enters and pulls her away, forbidding her to meet Michael again. I talked her into getting a truck. You stay away from my baby. You stay away from my little girl. Later that evening, Michael infiltrates the morgue and murders Dexter Ward, played by Luca Skew, a cousin of Kerwin and Platt. He also pays a visit to Tom Laws, the local alcoholic, played by Ron Sobel, and introduces himself as a man named Billy Connors. Billy Cox. Due to the MPAA, the movie was far bloodier than the final version that was exhibited in the theatres. Although the network drastically edited the movie, it also became a mainstay on the Monster Vision series by Joe Bob Briggs. Michael rushes to Amanda's house to keep her safe from the murderer, but her father chases him away. Shoemaker informs Eli and Caroline at the hospital about a mysterious second underlying layer of a weird bodily substance that emerges in Michael's x-rays. What is it? A subcutaneous layer just beneath the epidermis. Later, Michael informs Eli and Caroline furiously that he believes Eli is not his dad, but that Billy Connors actually is. He ain't my father. Billy Connors is my daddy. Eli wants answers when Tom meets them the very next day to inform him that actually Michael isn't guilty of the killings, but instead Billy Connors is. Michael murders Tom before going to Amanda's residence. 
Recognizing that his violent impulses are back, Michael begs Amanda to leave the city before throwing himself out of the window in an attempt to commit suicide. Michael's x-rays in the movie were actually Paul Clemens x-rays. Metal strips were put onto Paul Clemens to give the appearance of subcutaneous abnormalities. Sheriff Poole and Eli arrive at the Collins residence and discover a malformed skeleton shackled in the chair. Michael changes into an ugly monstrosity in front of Shoemaker, Horace, Caroline and Judge Kerwin in the hospital. Michael murders Horace after surviving several several bullets to the chest and flees into the night. Outside, his human skin has sloughed off. Judge Kerwin requests that he be protected in the correctional facility. He says that Lionel Kerwin imprisoned Billy Connors in his cellar. Lionel, a crazed fundamentalist Christian, shackled him there after discovering Billy in bed with his wife. He had to take Billy and lock him up in that cellar. Lionel then murdered his wife and left her body for Billy to consume. Lionel, the Kerwins and Ward kept obtaining corpses for Billy to consume which made him turn into a horrific monster. The metamorphosis scene which the audience was sold on was not handled appropriately according to writer Tom Holland. He believed that director Philippe Mora stayed too long on Paul Clemens, not cutting away to show the reaction shots from the other performers in the room which could have made the effect much more horrifying than it was. Michael storms the county jail, breaching the walls in order to behead Judge Kerwin. He then pursues Amanda whose car has gone off the road. He chases her into the forest near where Caroline was assaulted. He forcefully attacks and impregnates her there. Michael attacks Eli when his parents, Shoemaker and the sheriff arrive. Caroline pulls out a shotgun and blasts Michael in the head, instantly killing him. The McCready's as well as Sheriff Poole stand awkwardly next to Shoemaker, who is cradling Amanda's mutilated body. During production, Paul Clemens in the monster suit had been unable to understand Philippe Mora's command during the climactic assault assault scene with Amanda, so Mora instructed him to advance by placing his hands on Clemens buttocks. When studio officials saw the dailies and observed a mystery hand fondling the monster, they were absolutely bewildered. Why should you watch The Beast Within 1982? Philippe Mora has done a number of weird films in his underappreciated career, with critics calling some decent, some genuinely bad. This movie is probably one of his best. The Beast Within is filled with creepiness and terrible deaths. The fascinating supporting cast is an extra draw for spectators. The Beast Within is rarely discussed in conversations about horror films from the 1980s, but it should be. This amusing and successfully spooky B-horror film is one of the finest and most underappreciated monster pictures of the 1980s. The tale is inventive, with a touch of old-school horror and a fair dose of building tension, and it's peppered with some surprisingly good murder sequences. The grisly makeup effects aren't awful, and this movie has a crazy ending as well as a wild transformation scene. Direction-wise, Philippe Mora does an excellent job of giving the movie a beautiful southern gothic atmosphere while also creating an oppressive sense of dread. The Beast Within is a horror film that definitely deserved more appreciation. It's a genuinely unforgettable horror journey with no dull moments. Check it out if you're an enthusiast of creature features. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.